Yeah, when I was in the vehicle security business, um, we were also, I had um, fully staff there. We couldn't pay rent at one, at one point. Um, uh, and our investors wouldn't put any more money. And this man um, took me to lunch. I was just praying that he would pay because it was very important. And he asked me about the, the business and we were up against the, the wall. We had literally the creditors sitting in our reception waiting to be paid. We hadn't paid the rent for, for ages. We hadn't, you know, and it, I wouldn't be able to make 40 salaries at the end of the month. And he took me for lunch and I, in my head it was all over. And he kept asking me these questions about the technology we had. And I kept saying, it doesn't matter about that. It's all over. So he says, why do you say that? I said, I can't pay the staff. I can't pay my creditors. So he said, oh, that's cash flow issues. Tell me more about, he like, he went eh, like that. He says, tell me more about the technology. Yeah. So I told him, he says, this is so exciting. Da, 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 da. And he got all excited about this. So I said, but you're missing out something. I'm, I can't even develop, further develop that because of where I am. So he says, all you need is another, in, uh, another investor. Start just calling our couple of other investors and and uh, and go and sell them this so that was on the tuesday on the wednesday i sent out a whole bunch of emails i got an appointment up in joburg remember i was in durban mm. i came up to joburg i met with um a company mm. and uh, and i pitched and they 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 valued at that time we were game over valued the business at 10 million rand and they gave us three million rand for thirty percent. Like on, on literally on the Monday, I thought it was all over. Tuesday, I go for lunch. Wednesday, I'm thinking, if, and and th Thursday afternoon, I've got three million rand that committed. Quick. That quick. So my point in that story was what that man did was he kept asking different questions. So this, you asked me that what I would do and what I do now. Mm. My my thing is for as long as you can ask different questions, you carry on. For as long as you're getting different answers, you carry on. When you can stop, when you stop being able to ask different questions around your business, when you can't get different answers, that's the point to give up. And so, very what a big role that I do, even because even in, in my investments, the entrepreneurs get to points where they also psychologically are stuck or they're at a, a breaking point. And then I go to them and I say. Okay, what about this? Have you thought of this? This what ha would you, what would happen if that? What would happen if that? If you thought about it this way, what would happen? And then you can see their brains switch on again, and now the, and then they carry on. Mm. Okay, so that you need to be able to do that to yourself. You need to reframe your context again and again. So in your first, I'd say relationship with failure, mm. right? First time around, okay, the first time you failed. Um, you had all the backing, all the indicators were leading you towards success. And then you failed. And then the second time around when you were trying out, you didn't have the money, but you had resources in terms of the team that you had around you. What do you think was the difference between the two when you had the money and when you didn't have the money, but had the resources in terms of the people that were around you? Well, I had the resources. I, I had an, an, a support ecosystem, but a lot of people do. They just don't reach out to it. They're too proud or what, whatever the case may be, or they've got the wrong people in the ecosystem. They don't curate that ecosystem. Mm. So for me, my advice to, to entrepreneurs is ensure you cur curate your ecosystem to people who can support you, but more importantly, to reach out to those people and be vulnerable to those, those people. When you come with your bravado and you're, you know, you know I, I think that's the worst thing is when you, you, you come with this bravado, how the good things are, etc. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you another story with my mentor that, that happened, which talks to that. I'm now um, in, the, in the, I think I was in the, uh, the vehicle security business. I don't know which one I was with, with the mentor. I go to his house. I'm sitting in the house and we're sitting talking and he keeps looking at his watch. So I'm thinking, I'm getting the body language that, you know, he's, so eventually after the third or fourth time he's looked at his watch, I say, do, do you need to go somewhere? So he goes, no, 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 we've got an hour. 
So I said, oh, no, it looks like you have to go somewhere. So he said, oh, because I'm looking at my watch. So I said, yeah. So he says to me, no, no. He said, you've been, te- for 30 minutes, you've been telling me how great you are. For 30 minutes, you've been telling me how good it is. Do you want to get some value out of this meeting? Or do you want to carry on the next 30 minutes telling me how great things are? Mm-hmm. I was 20 something when, I, when he did. It was like punching me in the stomach, right? But that, that was another, another moment in my life where, where I, I realized that when you're going to be in front of a mentor, it's not about beating your chest and being saying how great things are. Okay. It's not like telling the world like what your website looks like and it all looks great. You need to be vulnerable and talk about the warts and the, the, all the bad things that are happening. Otherwise, if you're not vulnerable around those things, you can't actually get the right kind of support. So some people in your ecos, your network, you can't trust with that kind of vulnerability, then they need to be removed. You need to put people around you that you can trust with that level of vulnerability. But I think the bigger work is for you to be vulnerable and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I, 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 I've tried this, I've tried this, I, I've come to, my, to the end. And then listen. Hmm. That takes a lot of honesty hmm. that one needs to have with themselves. So we, you obviously did not have it when you had that conversation with your mentor. Is it something that one can develop even before they get to the point where they are told that you need to be vulnerable? Yeah, I think, I think I was lucky in the sense that that moment happened for me. And if you look, I, I mentor six people a year, that's it, in, in directly, mm-hmm. other than my partners. But in, in that, I always tell them that come, if, you, if I'm going to mentor you, it's, it's, it's brutal. I'm brutal. I'm like that because I grew up with a, quite a brutal mentor. In other words, he was direct said it as it was. There was no, how are you doing? And let me make you feel good. It was very direct. And because I, I think I was relatively strong and to be able to handle it, I handled that. When he punched me, I took the punch. And then like it, there was a, like a, a short circuit in the brain. And then I, I had the common sense to turn it. You know, so, so I'm that guy now. I've become that brutal with, with my mentees. Uh, so some people can't handle it and very often when a, a mentee comes and I go oh, this is what is going to happen and then I do it they don't come back because they can't handle it they don't handle. come back they don't come back they don't come back so is it, is it maybe what we talked about having that relationship with pain because it's painful yeah when somebody's going to tell you brutal facts but the pain is to look at yourself you have to look at you I think the biggest battle for an entrepreneur is dealing with themselves, mm-hmm. dealing with who they are and their weaknesses, their own weaknesses, their own, like, you know, that whole thing for five years and two months, you're trying, you're trying, trying, and you're failing. Mm-hmm. Something's got to be telling you there's something, I mean, the feedback is there's something wrong with you. So you have to keep introspecting, what am I doing wrong? Me, yeah. not, not because of me, 